Hello everybody and welcome to your 31st SFML tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning, we're going to be making a big leap onto loading maps from files. Uh, so um, what we're going to be using now, we're not going to be using arrays anymore, we're going to be using what are vectors. And you can think of vectors as dynamic arrays. Now if you haven't used vectors and you think they're pointless, they're really not pointless, I would advise you to learn about vectors uh preferably after you learn about classes and all this essential stuff but i i would advise you to learn vectors i'm going to be using it in the advanced platformer series so it is a must know i will state it in the requirements in case you forget uh but yeah the vector is very important now what the vector allows us to do is that it's like a resizable array when you have a normal array you set the the size of the array uh, say it's two by two, and the the width of the ray can can't go past two, and the height of the ray can't go past two, or by the dimension you set it as. With a vector, you can resize the vector anytime you want to, make it any size you want to, etc., etc. And therefore, uh, it, it makes it a lot more convenient. Okay, uh, so we, we include a vector by putting include vector. So first of all, first and foremost, uh, we have to create a two-dimensional vector. Now the syntax for a vector is, is different than actually creating an array. Uh, we put vector, left stream operator, then we put vector again, put the left stream operator and right stream operator, and within that we put the type that we want, we're trying to cast the vector to, and then we name the vector whatever we like to name it. So this is how multi-dimensional uh, vectors work. Well, I'll, I'll show you in a second. So we, we open up our follow and our load map function and we have another vector, a single vector uh, of type int called temp vector. So this is how uh, uh, vectors work. So we have a two-dimensional vector. So our map vector is, is set to zero right now. Okay, it's set to null. We have nothing stored in it. So temp vector is gonna store all our values, okay? So uh, let's look at the map file. So our first map file is, is has fourteen elements in it. Okay. So um, say say we gather all those fourteen elements and we store it in the temp vector, and we add that temp vector to map vector. Now at uh, map vector zero has up to fourteen different elements. Okay. So from from zero to thirteen because it has fourteen different elements. Okay. So now if we were to get uh, the next line, the next line has 10 elements, okay? So map vector 0, I mean map vector 1, because uh, map vector 1 is on the new line, is going to have up to 10 different elements, etc, etc. So then what you can do in this sense, uh, we, we can think of the left uh uh, the the left side of the two dimensional array is going to signify the line number okay so these are representing the different line numbers and the right side of it is going to represent uh, the index within that line number so therefore map zero map vector zero zero will represent this map vector zero um, one will represent this element map vector one zero will represent this etc etc so the first one will represent the line number and the second one will represent uh, uh, what will represent the index within that line number to make it easier in that sense okay so let's go on with our program so we have a string called line and we do the regular checks the file is open and if it is then we run the while loop so we use get line and we're getting the line from our file and we're storing it in the variable line and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna loop uh, through the lines um, loop till we reach the the length of the line so we're looping through every single character within the line and uh, we're going to store that within our vector the downside to this method is that we can't store a uh, uh, large we can't store we only can store single values so values from 0 to 9 if we're storing alphabet alphabetical value they can't be like bunched together like that they have to um, it only could be a single character because all we're doing is checking for single characters so say I had negative 1 
it would it would use the negative sign as one character and the one as the next character and therefore our program wouldn't run properly so that is the downside with this method but we will fix that in the next tutorial uh so basically uh but but with this method uh it's also good even if you do a a, a large number of spaces in between them by accident whatever it, it will still run efficiently because it, it only checks uh it it only checks for uh whenever there's not a, the the index is not a space so you could do that you can make it any size you want uh any length you want all the lines don't have to be the same length this time they can all be different lengths uh i don't know why you'd want to do this i don't know maybe you you don't want to display something on this side of the screen and you want this to be a tunnel or something i don't know why but normally you would display a value to represent a transparency or something but uh that is for the next tutorial but uh, it just, it's just really up to you what, what's your style uh so basically we cycle through uh the length of the line and then if the line if that if the character is not a space and then we store that into a char called value and we store that in there and then we add it to a temp vector by using temp vector dot pushback we do at toi or a t o i uh t and then we put we put the value in there to change it from a char to an integer uh so we do that and we store the so we basically store the value in temp vector after a whole for loop then we store our temp vector within map vector by doing map vector dot pushback and we store the temp vector and we clear the temp vector making it available to put new files within it so basically what it's going to do is going to take the first line add it to map vector second line add to temp um map vector etc etc so that is it for loading the map now as for drawing the map uh everything seems the same but there is some changes uh look at our two for loops before we had map size x and map size y uh we we don't have map size x and map size y anymore and you can remove it from the top of your program we don't need that and we don't need load counter x anymore or load counter y uh so you can erase that from the top of your program so so what we how are we going to find out the the length uh and the width of the 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 sides or of our map so what we do is that we go by line by line basis okay so what we do is that we go for uh to the the size of the vector so how many this is representing how many lines are in the program and this is going to represent uh e each index within the line so how many lines and each index within each individual line so when map uh so when i is equal to zero uh we're checking for all the indexes within the first line okay so because we do it this way uh everything is the same but because we do it this way instead of i times block size and j and j times block size we have to change this because uh the indexes in our array uh or in our vector are representing the, um what's going on vertically right it's not checking horizontally it's check it's not checking it's not checking vertically sorry it's checking horizontally so therefore uh, we have to since the j is representing the the map back um each element within each index within each line then we have to do j times block size and i times block size right there so that's the only change we have to make uh, the only three changes we have to make within the draw function everything else here is good and once you run this program however you draw it in the in this file it will show up so no matter how long this this is uh it will change within our program so let's run this to see what we get so notice that uh it's exactly how we drew it on our map so that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed this and bye